चैप्टर सिक्स एंड सेवन डील विद द एंटरप्राइजिंग इन्वेस्टर डे ट्रेडिंग इज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट वेपन्स एवर इन्वेंटेड फॉर कमिटिंग फाइनेंशियल सुसाइड सम ट्रेड्स माइट मेक मनी मोस्ट ट्रेड्स वॉन्ट बट योर ब्रोकर विल ऑलवेज मेक मनी योर ईगरनेस टू बाय और सेल अ स्टॉक कैन लोअर योर रिटर्न कॉस्ट ऑफ ट्रेडिंग इज सिग्निफिकेंट एंड देन कम्स टैक्सेस सो यू शूड ट्रेड ओनली इफ यू कैन कवर ऑल दोज टैक्सेस एंड trading cost then only it will make sense only the most patient investors get to keep almost everything while others give huge chunk of their gains to brokers and irs ipo is a get rich quick toxin people thought linux was the next microsoft on the opening day its price was 30 but closed at 250 and then it fell to 1 dollar in 3 years continuously the psychology of people is that they want to buy the next microsoft because they missed the last one ipo can also be termed as it's probably overpriced no matter how many people want to buy a stock you should buy only if the stock is a cheap way to own a desirable business always see what the company's business is worth price of a stock seems more important to people than the value of the business it represents that is why they fall prey to it there are two reasons why you should not buy popular companies number 1 stocks with good records and good prospects sell at correspondingly high prices they are already overpriced second the future prospects may prove to be wrong an enterprising investor is not one who takes more risk than average or who buys aggressive growth stocks but simply one who is willing to put in extra time and effort in researching his her portfolio graham insists on calculating pe ratio based on a multi year average of past earnings that is like i said in the previous video price should be 25 times the average earnings of past 7 years that way you lower the odds that you will overestimate a company's value based on temporarily high burst of profitability the more enthusiastic the public grows about a stock the faster its advance compared to actual earnings growth and the riskier it becomes so to obtain better than average results stock selection number 1 must meet objective or rational test of soundness second must be different from the policy followed by most investors and speculators so there are three recommendations in this chapter number 1 relatively unpopular large companies concentrate on large companies that are going through a period of unpopularity it has two advantages they have resources in capital and brain power to get through adversity number 2 market is likely to respond at a reasonable speed to any improvement shown second recommendation is purchase of bargain issues bargain issue is one which based on analysis appears to be worth considerably more than it is selling for a stock is not a true bargain unless the indicated value is at least 50% more than the price two major sources of undervaluation are currently disappointing results or neglect or unpopularity now what i'm going to say is very important the type of bargain issue that can be most readily identified is a common stock that sells for less than the company's net working capital and net working capital being current assets minus total liabilities it's not current assets minus current liabilities it's current assets minus total liabilities this means that buyer is paying nothing for fixed assets very rare but great opportunity lack of interest in secondary companies in an industry makes them undervalued so third recommendation special situations or workouts for example some investors purchased bonds of railroads in bankruptcy which became worth more when railroads were reorganized a small percentage of enterprising investors are likely to engage in such situations individual investors should not buy preferred stock they should buy it if it is selling for 50% of the par value or at most 2/3 of the par value preferred stock is good for corporations not individuals because it provides tax benefits to corporations in an ideal world intelligent investor would hold stocks only when they are cheap and sell them when they become overpriced then duck into the bunker of bonds and cash until stocks become cheap again according to graham you can't time the market a danish philosopher has said life can only be understood backwards but it must be lived forwards in financial markets hindsight is always 20 by 20 but foresight is legally blind the faster the companies grow the more expensive their stocks become and when stocks grow faster than companies investors always end up sorry a great company is not a great investment if you pay too much for the stock the bigger they get the slower they grow for example a 1 billion dollar com- company can double its business but how will a 50 billion dollar company double it 
Intelligent investor gets interested in big growth companies not when they are at their most popular but when something goes wrong. For example, Johnson and Johnson investigation dropped its price by 24%. Great time to buy it as it made it relatively unpopular large company. Graham says, never put all the eggs in one basket. Booming industries can make you fortune, but when hard times hit, all their eggs will break along with it. So how can you find bargain stocks? Find the list of stocks that have hit new lows for the past year. Then test them for Graham's networking capital test, also known as net nets, which we have talked about earlier, current assets minus total liabilities. And total liabilities should also include preferred stock. Compare it with current stock price to check if it's a bargain. You can still lose money, but you should buy them only if you can find a couple dozen at a time and hold them patiently. Investing in foreign stocks is not mandatory but advisable. To be prudent, you should put some of your money abroad also because no one knows what the future will bring home or abroad. Putting up to a third of your stock money in mutual funds that hold foreign stocks ensures against the risk that your own backyard may not always be the best place in the world to invest.